everyone. It's Chala. I have given up on my computer. It won't recognize my camera for some reason, so I'm doing the phone version. How are you guys? I have no idea how this looks. It's Tea Time Tuesday with Chala. Oh, after a very like eventful struggling with my technology, we're gonna have to test this one crystal. I don't know. But today, Strangely enough, I wanted to talk to you about video, why you should turn on your video during teleconferencing or sorry, video conferencing. I've actually written about this and I'm uh, really, it, it um, irks me so much when people join a call, if even if it's a group call and for whatever reason they don't turn their camera on that I knew as a marketer whether it's for your career or for your business, I knew that it was a bad idea not to turn on your camera, but I dug into it, I took some research, I found some research that I wanted to share with you, and I just thought some of it was hilarious. So um, there, it's no surprise to you that video conferencing app downloads went up 90% versus pre-COVID, and that's per week, and um, you know, the reason why video is so important rather than voice is because video is processed 60,000 times faster than the brain. And you know, over 90% of information is transmitted to the brain visually. And um, according to a Forbes report, and this was done in 2017, video strengthen, strengthens relationships versus voice about 47% more. It, it increases engagement more than voice by 55% and it deepens empathy and cooperation by 40% versus just voice. And um, here's some really interesting facts. I mean, um, a lot of people worry more about, so 48%, almost half of everybody polled, worries more about their appearance, like me, their appearance versus the content of what they're saying, which is crazy. Um, the attractiveness of the attractiveness self rating of these people were 6.4, which is you know not that great. That's in general, but when they rated themselves on video, it went down to a 5.5. So everybody thinks that they're uglier on camera. It's not just women. And um, the reason, the number one reason why people thought they were ugly on camera was because of their hair. Number one reason was their hair and the rest of it was all like different things. And just so people don't have to show up on these camera video meetings, get this, 13% pretend their camera's broken. 9% fake poor Wi-Fi, 6% fake an appointment, so they don't even have to be there, Six, another 6% fake being sick, and then 4% use child their child as an excuse. So like everybody has their children at home, so that's a great excuse. And uh, on the complete other you know, spectrum, the one-tenth of everybody who's on camera in uh, video conferencing is not wearing any pants, underwear, or bra. I assure you that I'm wearing all three. So that's what I wanted to tell you about is that um, the other interesting thing that I, I laughed at was if you were born um, after 1980, get this, 57% feel comfortable in video versus if you're my age, 17% feel comfortable in front of video. So who are the business owners and the executives? Well, if you know they're in their, oh, any, any age above 50, they're really, really not feeling comfortable. So I can understand, and I just told you all the reasons why um, they don't feel comfortable and what they have issues with. But I also told you all the reasons why you should be on camera, you should be turning on your camera. In marketing, especially, this is for business owners, because this is, you know, I'm hosting this Tuesday Tea with Chala on um, a business page, my business page, which is a marketing business page, and the repositioning expert. And in at the repositioning expert, we all believe, me and ever, anybody who's ever worked with me, worked for me, 
believes that visibility is money. So if you're turning off your camera in a meeting where it's a business situation, whether you're an employee or you're um, you know, working for yourself, you're turning off money. You're turning off the ability to communicate better, to uh, you know, be able to empathize better, to be able to connect deeper and so on. So I hope I've been able to convince you. I mean, most of the time I convince, I try to convince my clients to try to do visibility for their marketing, whether it's, if it's on their website, whether, I mean, gosh, video is even like so far out for, for most of them, but they've had to get used to it. Now, the grandmothers are, you know, zooming into weddings and parties or family parties. And my little kid, like even toddlers or even kindergartners are doing lessons on or, or games on Zoom. So, uh, and not necessarily just Zoom, but that's just the, the platform that comes to mind. So you have to be learning the etiquette to um, be able to communicate better and you have to be visible and you have to be okay with all of that. So I hope I've, in the few minutes that I've berated you, have convinced you, because there's a whole bunch of very smart people who've done lots of research that say the same thing. And I knew I had an igling that um, that's what it was, that it, it, was, it was a bad thing to be turning off your camera. So the next time, you know, if you're an introvert and you feel like turning off your, your camera because you don't look good, well, pretend that it's an in-person meeting and do what you have to do for an in-person meeting because for the foreseeable future, that's what we're at. And even further than that, I think most meetings are maybe going to stay on this platform. So why not become more comfortable with it, prepare yourself for it and whatever it is that you need to do to feel better and more comfortable, just don't turn off that camera. I hope that was helpful, everyone. That's just my tea. I didn't even get to take a sip. It's always mint tea, remember. But I can take requests. That's all, everyone. Now I'm gonna go and figure out with my team what the heck is going on with my uh, computer and the, the camera and the Facebook. All right, take care, everyone.